So in this next part, we're actually now going to discuss finding all these areas and turn them into probability. The fact that we discussed earlier that we said, oh, 100% is the curve where a half is 50%, the other half is 50%. Let's rewrite the same thing now, but in decimal form, right? So that would mean one where 0.5 is on the left and 0.5 is on the right, right? The Because we can rewrite, and I can write it as a fractions if I wanted to, right? So we can rewrite percentages as decimals, decimals of percentages and stuff. So we realize like, well, if we can do area where the total area is one and the left half is 0 0.5 and the right half is 0 0.5, then let's turn it into, let's go back to chapter 10. Let's talk about percentages and probability because it all still lies between zero and one. We, it takes on that probability behavior and form. So let's just say, well, if my area is 0.3, isn't that 30%? If my area is 0.25, that's 25%. So now we rewrite probabilities from areas uh, underneath these bell curves and we write it in terms of probability. So if we go back to those peanut butter jars, right, where we found um, these areas, they correspond, right, less than $3, more than $4.25 and in between. Let's go ahead and take those areas that we found from each one. So area was 0 0.0035 for that first one, more than 425 was 0 0.04226. And then the last one is 0.98224. That's a lot. 0.99824, Let's rewrite these in terms of probability. So we're gonna rewrite them in terms of percentages. So, um. We could say here, the probability, or, or we could say there is a 0.35% chance a randomly selected peanut butter jar costs less than $3. So it's highly unlikely that you'll find a peanut butter jar that costs less than $3, right? 0.35% it seems pretty low. Okay, so if I want to go ahead and just copy and paste the same thing here, just copy and then paste. It's going, right, it's just like that other one, the empirical world, just the same thing, um, except we'll change the percent and then this phrase here. So if the area was 0 0.01426 for the more than $4.25 peanut butter jar, then there is moving the decimal over twice, right? There is a 1.426% chance that a randomly selected peanut butter jar cost more than $4.25. Okay, so if we did this one, and let's erase that, and then this. All right, so here, again, we would have an area 0.98224 for between $3 and $4 and 25 cents, move the decimal over twice, we would say there is a 98.224% chance that a randomly selected peanut butter jar costs between $3 and $4.25. And so now what we're doing with all that area, now what we're doing is now we can brand, now we have this whole population. What if I randomly selected a peanut butter jar from all the peanut butter jars in the world? 
what is the chance that it's going to cost less than $3? And there's less than a 1% chance, right? So we say that's kind of unlikely, right? And same thing here. But it seems like there's a higher probability of uh, randomly selecting a peanut butter jar from the world, and it would be between these two prices. Okay, so now converting these areas now to probability, let's go ahead and look at these curves in terms of probability. So here they give you the z-score. Notice they give you p. So this should remind you of your probability chapter where there's the p for probability and now we have z-scores. So here is p for probability, right? And then here, the z-score. What is this saying? The first thing we'll do is interpret this. They gave us a z-score already. So notice when they have the word z, they've already given us in terms of the standardized distribution of z-scores. So step one of finding the z-score, since we were already given it, so that's great. We can go on to shading. This one, we have to be careful when we're drawing them. So let me draw it again. They get worse as I go on. Let's see, here we go. <laughs> here is, and I usually put the mean, right? But I won't this time because we're in terms of z-score and I'll put z equals zero. Then what I do is I look at this z-score here and I determine where it is compared to zero. This is positive 1.23, so positive means it's above average and it's to the right of zero. So let me go ahead and put 1.23 here. The next piece would have to be observing what area I'm looking at. It, once again, it's less than, so it's pointing to the left, so it's gonna be to the left. That's a good way of noticing that. Okay, so let me take it, and I'll shade everything to the left. Now, where's the table value? Recall the table value is the area from the mean to that value. So notice here, if I get the table value and look it up, that's not enough. I need everything on the right, left of this mean, or this equals zero, all of it. But you know what that is. What is that? What is the lower half? That total area, you know what it is. It's 0.5, right? It's at 50%. So all I have to do is take the table value I'm gonna look up right now and add it to a half. So these are like the special cases, like the, the intertwining of like the area and looking the table value up in the method. So drawing and shading are gonna be the most important. So what I do is I, I encourage you to always draw, look at the direction of your symbol here in between Z and the Z-score, and if it points to the left, then go to the shade to the left. But because now I'm on, my z-score is on the right of my mean, but I'm going to the left, so I'm taking all the area over here plus the table value. All right, so I can see I'm already, I already can see what I'm going to do once I look it up. So let's go ahead and look up the table value. The z-score given is 1.23. So let's go to our z-score table and look up z equals 1.23. So I want here 1.2 is the tenths, the hundredths is the three. So I'm looking up 1.2 on this left column and 0 0.03 for the hundredths. So 1.2 is right here and then three, 1.203. There we go. And there's my table value, 1.23. So 0 0.39065, 0 0.39065. Okay, so now let's go ahead and calculate the area or the probability. <laughs> I'm going to write it as 
P parenthesis Z less than 1.23. So the probability that a randomly selected Z score is less than 1.23 will be the um, 0.5 plus the table value. So 0.5 plus 0 0.39065. So let's go ahead and just add that up. So we get um, 0.89065. So the probability that a randomly selected z-score is less than 1.23 is 0 0.89065. And if I wanted to write it as a percentage, it could be like 89.065%, right? So that's the process in which you'll do that. Now, how I got 0.89065, I added these in my head, but feel free again to use the calculator to add them right here. Very simple addition. Okay, so now let's go ahead. Now we have a rhythm, so let's go to the next one. I do want us to know a little typo, so please stop and mark a negative right here. It's supposed to be Z greater than negative 2.07. So please note that in your notes. And I apologize. I thought I caught all my typos, but I didn't. <laughs> so make sure to make that negative 2.07. Okay, so then picking up where we left off, again, that's the z-score, here's the probability, and so I can go straight into shading. Now recall, we don't know the mean, but we do know z equals zero at the means. I always just mark it as z equals zero. Negative 2.07 would be way over here. Right, negative means that it's going to be below average and less than zero. So I would like to see Z greater than negative 2.07. Greater than, which way do I shade? Well, it's pointing to the right, so shade to the right of that Z score. I always say, follow the clues. However, where is the table value? What area is that? Well, the table value here is between zero and negative 2.07. It doesn't give me the entire shading, but I know what that is, right? I know this half, this half from Z equals zero all the way to the end on the right is a half. So if I could just look up the table value on the chart, I could add it to one half and therefore I would get all the area I need. So now I have an idea of what I need to do, right? So let me go ahead and go into the next step and look up the table value. The z-score we want to look up is negative 2.07, but remember it's symmetric, so I can just look up 2.07 and then it's just the area no matter what side it's on. So let me go ahead and take a look. So let's go 2.07. So let me right here, z, 2.07. Notice here we're going to do 2.0 on the tenths and then 7 on the hundredths. So 2.0 will be that first column, and then 0 0.07 will be the hundredths on the top row. So let's go ahead and look for that 2.0 here, and then I need a 7. So where is 7? Right here. All right. So that means I have an area from z equals 0 to 2.07 of 480. 77. 0.4877. 4.8077. Okay, so the last part here is now to calculate the probability or the area. However you want to say it now, they're interchangeable. So the probability that the z is greater than negative 2.07 is equal to the table value plus a half. 
The table value I got was 0 0.48077 plus a half. So that would give me 0 0.98077. So the probability that a randomly selected z-score is greater than negative 2.07 is 0 0.98077, or you could say, of course, 98.077%. So it's highly likely that you randomly select an object from your data, and it would be greater than um, negative 2.07. All right, so the last one says, what about the um, in-between, right? It's always the in-between. So let's go straight into drawing. Let's see if we can see this. So right away we know z equals zero. We have two z scores, one to the left, negative 2.76, and one to the right, 1.96. If I want to randomly select z scores, that's in between these two values, then I'm looking for area between two z-scores. But here are the table values. Here's table value one, table value two. So notice I'm not going to even use anything. In fact, I'm going to go straight to the tables, grab the values for those z-scores, and add them up. So all I have to do now is take this area from the mean on the left side, table value one. Here's area from the right side from the um, z-score zero to 1.96, table value two, and add them together. Okay, so I have a really good idea of what I need to do. So let me go ahead and look up the table values. I need one for negative 2.76, and I need another one for positive 1.96. But again, it doesn't matter the positive or negative because I'm just finding the area, and then I'm just going to add them up. All right, so um, the table value 1, set it up. Table value 2, set it up. Okay. So we need negative 2.67 and um, 1.96. So negative 2.67, so 2.6, whoa, down here, and then 7. So 4, 9, 6, 2, 1, there's that first one. And then 1.96, so 1 1.9, and then 6, right here. 0.47500. Let's go ahead and write that on our paper over here. So table value one was 0 0.49711, and the second one was 0 0.45 47500. Okay, so if I need to find the probability or find the area, then I know that the probability that a randomly selected z-score is between negative 2.76 and 1.96 is equal to table value 1 plus table value 2. Okay, so 0.49711 plus 0.4750. Okay, so 0.49711 plus 0.47500. So if I add that up, that's a lot of the of the curve, right? 0.97211. Okay, and of course I could always rewrite this as a percentage as 97.211%. So that is the process. So I don't even, um, you know, it doesn't really matter what, what situation you have, right? You're always going to need the Z-score 
draw and shade and determine that area from geometrically first. So when you get to those last steps, all you're doing is grabbing information and doing the operation. So these are the situations we're going to have. You're going to have where you're going to subtract from a half, right, with these two, right, or add just the table. That's between. That's always between. And these other ones that we did with probability, it was similar, but the Z, again, we were doing more than half, so we were adding a half to these first two. But in between, always just add. Okay, so just draw it first and see, the, you know, determine the situation. So here, now let's do an application. Like, what does it all mean, right? So a statistics instructor obtains heights over 35 students. Luckily, the heights are normally distributed with a mean of 64 inches and a standard deviation of 4.6 inches. What is the probability percentage for one of our students to have a height of 60 inches or more? So there's a lot of information here. I would just start that we know that she has, not that it's important, 35 students. But we know that the mean height is 64 inches with a standard deviation of 4.6. And I want to know, again, observing, I want to see a the probability that if I randomly selected a student from the 35, um, or not from the, from the population, like what would be the probability that student would be 60 inches or taller, right? So the observation value is 60 inches. Okay, so let's go through the process. I wasn't given the Z-score, so I have to, it's like peanut butter jars. So again, I'm going to the find the Z-score. So the Z-score is just going to be the value of observation 60 minus the mean 64, all divided by 4.6, the standard deviation. You can go ahead and just put this in your calculator, parentheses 60 minus 64, and then divide by uh, the standard deviation of 4.6. Notice we get negative, so it would be below average, but round to the nearest hundredth, right, to look it up at the, on the table. So 9 is above 5, so it's going to be negative 0.87. Step 2 is always to um, go ahead and draw in shade. And we love doing that. That's the funnest part of this, I think. <laughs> See, I told, they just get worse as I go along. <laughs> In any case, here is the mean. I do have the mean this time. It's 64. So where would my observation value lie? Here's 64. Would it lie to the right? Or is it taller than 64 inches or shorter? So in this case, 60 lies to the left side. And it's or more. So more means what? Less than or greater than? That's right, greater than. Notice that it point greater than points to the right, shade to the right. Okay. Now let's assess, right? You're like, ooh, the table value is here. Always mark the table value. The table value will not be the answer, right? It's like every the table value and everything on the right. Well, I know what that everything on the right is. I know everything on the right is a half. So if I could just look up the table value and add it to one half, then I have the probability or the area. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So step three would be now is to look up the table value. The z-score we're going to look up is negative 0.87. Um, so let's go to our table here. So negative 0.87. Notice that our tenths place is going to be 8 and our hundredths will be 7. So 0.8. Not over here, not here, not here. 0.8. Here we go. Here, 0.8 and then all the way to 7. So I get 0.3785. 37.85. Okay. All right, and the last step, we're almost there, is actually to find the area. This isn't the answer because we wanted a probability percentage. 
me let me underline that. So we wanted to probably so we're gonna have to like rewrite that area once we find it. All right, so the area for this one is going to be equal to the table value plus a half. So the table value was 0 0.30785, and we're going to add a half. So that's going to be 0 0.80785. If this was a probability percentage, it would be 80.785%, right? So there we, we would say something nice like um, there is a 80.785% chance that a randomly selected student um, is taller than 60 inches. Okay, so again, area now, the bell curve is so much more, right? We started with the empirical rule and now we're here. It's so crazy. But yeah, see the application of now probability coming together with your mean and standard deviation and now a curve, not necessarily a histogram. So it's all coming together in a nice, in a nice way with normal distribution, which we really like.